Welcome to the latest This Week's Acker podcast sponsored by Skybet Acker Freeze. Tom, Jimmy and Jake with you as ever to run through the schedule. Coming up on this episode then we're aiming for back-to-back wins with five teams fancied at above 16-1. to The promotion race across the three divisions is in focus and we're telling you where the best place to see some sea creatures is. Bit of a tongue twister and I didn't mess that up which I like. Let's know your thoughts in the comments or through football, so sporting like football social media channels, I should say. And remember to keep it fun. Never bet more you can afford. This podcast is 18 plus. Please gamble responsibly. Right, as ever, let's reflect on last week's Acker. Um, are we excited to do this or is there a bit of a, a sadness that the long winless run <laughs> has finally come to an end? And believe it or not, we can actually pick a winning acker, it turns out. <laughs> you can. Who who knew, eh? You're happy about it, aren't you? I'm always happy when I'm winning acker because yeah. not only do we actually have a winning acker, but we actually win money because we all back it. So it's a it's a win-win all round. Um, but you're not so happy, are you? I'm fucking gutted. <laughs> I've been br- browsing the comments and it's, a, it's terrible state. Everyone's saying, well done, congratulations, knew you could do it. Where's the fucking hatred gone? <laughs> It was literally that one. It was, it was toxic. Say, obviously, we'd like to read out your comments, so let's get to them shortly. But that was your one takeaway. You go, mm, they're all nice. Be nice. Mm, that was, <laughs> uh, who do we, who who do we have? I can't even remember last week, but they all won. Let me find it. Yeah. We had uh, Derby, Derby, Alton, Wrexham, Pompey, Pompey, Warsaw, Warsaw. All done it. I think twelve to one was the finals. Yeah, Portsmouth were the only one that won by a goal. The others won by yeah, goal or greater margin. So it's quite a nice situation to be in in the 80th minute. And I was waiting for the inevitable Oxford equaliser. Yep, didn't come though. Didn't come, did it? I was I was driving um, back from Aquarium on Saturday, and I saw Aquarium. One, um, the one Liverpool way. No, it wasn't the deep. Wasn't Blue Planet. Happened. Blue Planet, that's it. Yeah, being Blue I was Planet. driving back and I saw yeah, the scores. Really. Walsall had just equalised um, as I got in the car. So there was Portsmouth were drawing, Walsall were drawing. And then about 20 minutes later, just loads of messages started coming through on the uh, like the Apple CarPlay. Loads of messages coming that's through from the, Acker, much. from the Acker podcast. And I thought it was Tom, it was George, it was Joe. And I thought, right, this has either gone one or two ways. Either it's one, which is rarity nowadays, or Portsmouth have conceded a last minute equaliser. I had I had 30 minutes to wait on the drive before I could check my phone. And yeah, very, very happy to see that he very was Very responsible winner. and safe driving as it should be. That is correct, yeah. Uh, what, what would you say... Uh, no, 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 before we move on. I, okay, I'm, not moving, I'm not moving on. I was related to that point. Oh. What was would it, you say you, your favourite fish-based animal? Were you going to say that? I was just looking at Blue Aquarium. It looks amazing. You've got a pelican talk, frog zone, yeah. octopus talk... The, the theatre show. Daily feed, coral, coral cave talk. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, you the highlight? aquariums and they, they have the tunnels with, yeah, with yeah, yeah. things. Right. There was this massive shark mm. that just kept flying. It kept swimming over the top of this tunnel. Oh, yeah. It was. He looked like he was flying, like that. Him. Yeah. And his his and teeth. Him. His teeth. <laughs> like you get so close, you can see how many layers of teeth he's got. And you do not want to go anywhere near him. It was fright. A lot of the people were a bit scared. But not the, not was, the sharks. Was, but did it have an exhibit where you could put your hand in and touch the fish and stuff like that? Um, it you did. Have but, them. Sea life have those things. You dip your yeah. It was I mainly the turtles. Maybe I'm just dipping my hand into a tank. You can't. <laughs> like, like, you can't. Yeah, touch yeah, there was a piranha. No, there wasn't a piranha. Oh, right. uh, there were piranhas there, but you couldn't put your hand in. Comments then. What were people saying, Jimmy? As begrudgingly as you have to do it, we have to commit to the reading. Jimmy's out. in on Some the fishing now. He's, he's looking at what yeah. fish are there. Whatever they are, unfortunately, sometimes nice. Um, do I have to? Yeah, give us a few. All Come right. On. Well, is it Pearl? Oh, Nigel Stan. He was getting stuck into us. He's Pretty turns, much every week, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, he's turned soft. Uh, basically now so not going to read his comment out Um, we've got to read it out because he he, he said wishing you the best in the never ending search of a winner although I have zero faith in it happening and then he replied to his own comment saying pass me the knife and fork while I eat humble pie well done lad small confession it's not you it's me first time I haven't backed it and it won there we go then so yeah I mean the whole point of this you know, podcast fundamentally is to make a winning acker, and I've never seen Jimmy so disheartened. <laughs> the fact that the one episode we've done it in, you go, oh, for God's sake! Yeah, but I would if 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 it was me commenting, which it definitely isn't. I ain't got a burner. <laughs> I'd be straight back in. Like, you have got, got a lucky, burner. Peach fourth, 
favourites, all home teams. Any any idiot could do that, but everyone's been really nice. Mm. More of that, if in case we repeat it this week. Yeah. Hopefully, fingers crossed, going for back-to-back. Route one's a different thing. It's not if it wins, it counts. But um, <laughs> it's, like, it's basically like the Jason's paint trophy, isn't it? That it counts differently, yep. but it suits us when it suits our argument. Yeah, pick it up and drop it. it when we need it, don't we? Yeah. Um, we started the last week and the past couple with the Premier League, which I feel is a nice way to start mm-hmm. because on your account, at Jimmy the Punt, you put out the weekly poll where we put a few bankers in. Bournemouth, Sheffield United mm-hmm. was on that. Mm-hmm. I have not looked at the results of said poll, but I imagine quite a few people will be getting on board with this as one of the four options. And out of the three games taking place at 3pm on the Prem, in terms of adding selections to your ACA, opposing Sheffield United seems like a popular way for a lot of people to go. Yeah, well, it seems like a shrewd, shrewd move, but <laughs> given the Blades, my beloved's current form, but Bournemouth at one to three when I put out the poll, they got 60% of the votes. I think context is important. Of course, the sides come into it in polar opposite form. Well, maybe not Bournemouth so much, but Bournemouth haven't been below evens when they've faced any of the any of the new Premier League new boys so far this season, home or away. Suddenly they're going off at one to three. Yeah, it's just, it's just insane, calm down. Isn't it? Obviously, just calm down. As you all know, I was big on Bournemouth this year, but one to three just seems absolute madness. When keep in mind, Sheffield United have won a game quite recently. It was at Luton, who have been all right at home. It's not like they've never won a game of football before. Like this seems just incredibly short. Yeah. It is it's disrespectful. Short. It's not it's disrespectful. Really disrespectful to a Premier League manager. That's what it is. <laughs> Sandwiches and one to three Bournemouth. It's disrespectful to a Premier League manager. What is disrespectful to the Premier League as a product is Sheffield United to be sat with a minus 50 goal difference. Yeah. That shows just they are not competitive in, in the slightest. And if anything can signify just how bad they've been. So on Monday, they obviously played Arsenal. It was shocking performance. On our group chat, um, a couple of Arsenal fans that, that, are, that are on the chat, a couple of United fans went to the game, went to the pub beforehand. So at 7.36, so 25 minutes before the game, posted in the pub, giving it all this one with the, with the beers. And then literally at 24 past nine, which the match would have been about 60 minutes, Sheffield United fans sat at home watching it on the telly. Brilliant. He'd left Bramall Lane at half time and he was sat watching the second half in his own home because he just didn't want to be there because it was that bad. And it, I know that the price is short, one to three, but it's really hard to see Sheffield United picking themselves up after the back of off the back of some seriously bad hammerings and going to a Bournemouth team that went to Burnley, who are equally as bad as Sheffield United. Maybe not as bad, but won. I wouldn't say fairly comfortably, but you could No, but they were the better team. Com- it wasn't they were? It wasn't. They I were. watched it. I, I was hot on Bournemouth. Not really relevant to the show, but it wasn't a comfortable win. Not at all. Burnley I was watching that thinking, really why like have I? Why have I put? a lot of points on Bournemouth here. They are not filling me with yeah. confidence. And the, the, there was, obviously the goal skews all the data and the, the state of the game, but I don't think it was comfortable and I don't think they warranted the second goal. Yeah, but when I was watching it, I, I, was, work, I was working on the Sunday, I watched the game, I never thought Burnley were going to score against Bournemouth. Like they might have looked good and got close to the net, but they never really, in my opinion, caused too many problems. And whether that's no, down to Burnley or whether that's down to Bournemouth. I mean, don't forget, Bournemouth went to Sheffield United and beat them. Well, they were 3 nil up and then Blades scored a 97-minute e- uh, consolation uh, for that one to finish 3-1. I think the Bournemouth win comfortably, but I don't think there's value in the price. Yeah, you've nailed it there. Absolutely nailed it. 28 goals in 11 games, okay? That will take Sheffield United to 100 goals conceded this season. Yeah. Do you Would you back that to happen if a bookmaker said put a price obviously depending on the price but if you were just going to go yes or no mm. either money either way would you take Sheffield United like seeing 100 goals this season or not in a heartbeat Duff man do you know yeah. the scariest thing Cause it's not that much 28 and 11 yeah. I'd lean the other way you'd take a pay you'd concede 6 against Liverpool which is well yeah, that's, happened that's, Tottenham's that's, attacking that's, mentality <laughs> Very easy for it to happen. You'll have a, you'll have a good championship in, season. said in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. No, Wilder said uh, after the Arsenal game, so he was still pretty pretty angry. Because you've got to remember, he's a fan of the club. It's going to be hurting him more than anybody. Yeah, he, he does know that club he very well. He's inside out. He's been what, there that's before. That's why he's back there. He'll be there again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he said, expect to see a lot more of the kinder before the end of the season. He's going to be putting out 
some of the youth players. We have hit just play the kids territory, we have. which is never good on the 7th of March currently. <laughs> and even earlier than that, the beginning of March, <laughs> it's gone wrong. Shut the kids out. Yeah, um, kids in. Bottom of too short then. Is yeah, that what absolutely. we're saying? Despite the Blades' woes. Stay with that poll then, because it is a banker's one where we're suggesting short price ones. Yep, staples. Where where else came up that we could talk about? Well, it is not the most popular, but if we're going to go chronologically down the divisions, I think Southampton 1-2, to two, they host Sunderland, around 11% of people vote for them. And I, I, I had them on my list. They were supposed to play Wednesday, yesterday, Thursday as we record, uh, but there was a fire next to St Mary's, weren't they? So that got cancelled, so they'll be relatively fresh. Um, but it's more about how bad Sunderland are, to be honest with you. Yeah. They are, well, I've heard whispers from some Sunderland fans that they are fearful of the drop. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> Well, I, mean, I don't think that's realistic. No, nine points they are. Every the club rubbish. thinks that, right? Thinks yep. if we're in a bit of bad form, the amount of clubs go, oh, you know, we're in relegation. Half the division's in relegation trouble, <laughs> right? There are, if you think you're bad, there are fans of 11 slash 12 other clubs who yeah. think equal, well, Rotherham don't count. 10 other clubs who think, yeah, we're actually in trouble as well. But just yeah. how bad does, like, that context just puts into perspective how bad a decision it was to get rid of Mowbray. Mm hmm. No, yeah. they were pushing playoffs, they probably were going to finish 6th, 7th, 8th. And then they got rid of Mowbray for what? Exactly. And I've, that is that is a key thing, right? Because they've got such a young squad. It, it's a minor miracle that Mowbray got such a tune out of them. And his successor, Beal, just showed how difficult a job it is. And now they're, they're in the middle of nowhere. Well, they're up shit creek, you're out of paddle, really. Jack Clark's injured for six weeks. And suddenly that squad looks so, so young and inexperienced. And I know Southampton had a bit of a wobble, but the same side that went on a record and beat and run, isn't it? It's, yeah. That wasn't even that long ago. Every team has a wobble, don't they, mm -hmm. throughout the season. It doesn't matter who you are. You're going to have some down period, and I think Saints had theirs. I also think, and again, um, it's, this is pure speculation, but I, I think Leeds will beat Sheffield Wednesday on Friday night, but Wednesday are playing in a way which wouldn't surprise if they took points off Leeds and then that's added incentive for Saints who now have a game in hand on Leeds and if Leeds drop points then they're going to be right behind them again. So that may be coming to it. And ultimately, like Jim said, I think Sunderland are just... They are waiting for the end of the season to come now to see if they can get a new manager in, go again next year. Southampton looking to get back on the horse. Good side, strong 11. It's the cliched must win for Southampton this, to be honest, yeah. because they have started to drift away. It's six points... I think Leeds and Leicester have significant goal differences over the other two. Effectively, that's another point. I know they have to play Leeds still to come. It's kind of seven points because of the goal difference, and it, it they just have to, they simply have to win this. If they don't win this, then it is a case of a realistic chance of Cardiff, okay, have been okay, but Ipswich are there, Leicester, Hull, uh, Leeds at Sheffield Wednesday, all the other three have got difficult games. It's a huge opportunity, this, to actually close the gap and catch up a bit and it is that significant missed opportunity if they don't do so this was kind of on my maybe on the basis of Sunderland's second half performance against Leicester but then you wonder how much energy they've had to give out to do that yeah. um and just on the price cause yeah <clears throat> one to two might look a little bit short to some but they were one to two to beat Hull at home and Hull for my money are a better team at this moment in time than Sunderland there was only a couple of games ago they played Hull they did lose that game as the start of that little wobble that they had but just to, yeah from a pricing perspective I think this is probably right there may be a tiny bit of juice in the price given the way in which Sunderland are going do you want to take it? shall we? for an Acker pick? I think this the, like we're going to take yeah, the, it yeah the, you know, the, the way we did it last week was of course just pick good home teams at home, so that twice, but you know what I mean. That it, it, oh, and it worked the teams well. That were playing at home as well. Yeah. That's what we went. For. That's what, and then, you know they need to be good. They need to be good at home as well against teams who are struggling away. I reckon is where we go about I think it. That's it. Yeah. Should we put Southampton in? Then it made the poll, and ten percent was it? People agreed. Yeah. Well, Eleven point four. Eleven point four. Just look. I didn't realise how bad Sunderland's away form is. Talk yeah, they're, they're away. Horrendous. Form. Yeah, uh, nine losses in eighteen away. Seventeenth best record on the travel. It seems like we've talked ourselves into it here, isn't it? So first selection then of this week's Acker. It comes from the Skybet Championship. It's Premier League hopeful Southampton for a home win over Sunderland. Where else should we go then for the second selection? There must still be a couple of games that, yeah. that were on that list that we haven't discussed yet. Yeah, there were Charlton were on that list. They're actually the second yes. second most picked on the poll. As a, as a banker and I have to agree with all the people that have voted I mean this looks 
similar to the Southampton one. It's a it's a team that are improving, but mainly it's a really bad away team and just a bad team in general in Carlisle. Um, they're going down with a whimper. They're rock right bottom of the table. They are going to go down. It's just a formality. Um, they've lost nine of the last ten away from home. It's ten defeats across the last eleven. Charlton they may have only won twice in a six game unbeaten run, but they've had a tough schedule. They played four teams currently in the top ten under Nathan Jones. So the fact that they are unbeaten is well, credit to, to Jones and the way in which he's turned things around. I think that we are looking at four to seven. I probably would say this should be around one to two, and I think it probably will get off a bit shorter by the time we, we get to kick off. So, yeah, I'm back in chart, and I think that they are another lock in the Acre. Shit, yeah, shit. Completely <laughs> agree with you. Again? Shit! This is not good. Yeah, I think the worst thing for Carlisle is Paul Simpson, their manager, completely lost his swagger. Hadn't he? He took the, he took him up last season against all odds, like mm. hero status up there up north, and he just like lost the plot. I don't think anything he says or anything he does at this point is going to turn their fortunes, and I, it's just like oh, they're just seeing out the season now. So terrible, terrible team against a half decent one definitely goes in for me. Yeah, small split is forming at the bottom of the division. I think four points between Cheltenham and Shrewsbury, who are the next team there. Carlisle are. Like 13 points of drift, something like that, 14 points of drift. I think they are <laughs> miles away from it. But then on the flip side, Charlton, did anyone see this impact under Nathan Jones coming as soon as it did? No, we certainly didn't, did we? I think it would be a case of like, <laughs> for me, it was like, okay, stabilise a bit, obviously keep them in the division first and foremost, arrest that slide down. Yeah. Then look at the summer, rebuild, push back up towards the top end. The fact that there have been a lot of draws, but the fact that they've been as competitive as they have been, I think it probably then reflects in the price to win this game. That it's it's kind of staggering their turnaround so soon, and they are now well clear of relegation. There's enough teams between them that even if they did have, then have a dip towards the end of the season, they'd be fine. Um, seems a really nice place to build for next year now, having probably going to settle for a mid-table nothingness, which, let's be honest, you'd take. Oh, Given the predicament they were in when he took charge, absolutely. Snap your hand off for mid-table. Um, but yeah, like I said, two wins, but the, the results against good teams has, has been eye-catching, really. Like draws with Bolton, uh, Portsmouth, a win at Derby. Um, I think they drew with Lincoln as well in that run, a team that are on good form. So, you know, it's not like they're, just, they're getting results against teams below them. They're actually taking points off teams above them, which kind of shows a level that they're at. Should we take them as the second pick of the Acker? Yeah, let's do Should it. Should we side with some of these yeah. poll picks that we've had going out there? Yeah. Let's go else? for it then. Joining Southampton for a home win over Sunderland, it's Charlton to beat Carlisle from League One. One thing we've all got in common is having that one leg of an Acker let us down. From spending your winnings in your head to cursing that last minute equaliser that broke your heart. But it doesn't have to be that way. Acker Freeze from Skybet gives you the power to freeze a winning score early. Even if that team goes on to lose, Skybet will settle it as a winner. It's time to take action. It's time to Acker Freeze and end the game your way. Visit skybet.com for full terms and conditions. As ever then, Acker Freeze time those picks that we fancy to win, but you've got the little safety net of the freeze available there. One team from each of you. Where are we looking? Uh, Jake, kick us off. I'm liking the look of Morecambe. Three to one at home to Wrexham. Uh, we mentioned before, Wrexham, home away form is polar opposites. Uh, away from home, they've scored just 16 times in 18, which, you know, is <laughs> ridiculous compared to their home form. And Morecambe have hit a good patch. They are pushing for a playoff place. I'm going to take Shrewsbury away at Port Vale. Big game at the bottom of League One. But I did have that theory that I think Shrews would be better away from home than they are at home. Complete reverse to how it was before pitch, Hurst yeah. came in. Yeah, the pitch. Bigger pitch now. Expansive football. Beating Reading away. Beating Northampton away. Drawn with Derby as well. I think Port Vale haven't won in 11 games maybe oh, now. Yeah. It's a bad old run. So I'll take Shrewsbury at above 2-1. to one. Me? Yeah, I'm going to go against Barnsley at Oakwell. Lincoln... 14 to oh, 5. Game, yeah. yeah, very good. Line. They have not lost since New Year's Day. That's 10 games, 20 points, no defeats. Yep, School of Ballers got the imps acting really impish. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely way to round it off there. Back to this week's hacker. 
So with Charlton and Southampton so far, then we're looking around the 13 to 10 marker. Maybe we look at a slightly bigger price one if there are any now. And then it gives us a bit of freedom to play around for the final selections to go back to those kind of shorter price ones. Last week, we had four short ones. Warsaw at even money bumped it at two above that 10 to one marker. So maybe we look at the Warsaw style pick now. Do it, yeah. I said Shrewsbury then. Any yeah. interest in them? I have. That's an away team above two to one, or is that just too silly? No. That's ridiculous. I like it. I mean, the, we only heard a slight bit of your analysis in the Aka Freeze section, so please elaborate a bit more. Yeah, so I had uh, my mad theory of when Shrewsbury were under Matt Taylor that the. Uh, or Matty? Is he Matty? Anyway. So many Matt Taylor. Um, the, their pitch is massive, but the pitch itself, like the actual pitch size, is tiny. And then Paul Hurst has come in trying to play a different way. And then and my b- weird theory on them was I think it's going to flip. So I think they'll actually not be very good at home. They'll start to be good away. Now they have, after an initial upturn following the managerial change, dipped off a little bit. But like I said, in their four away games, of which they lost at Lincoln last time out, we heard from Jimmy Niaka a bit about how well Lincoln had been doing under Michael Scubala. The beaten oh, Reading, who have been good at home, beaten Northampton, who have been in decent form, and then they've drawn at Derby as well away from home potentially they're just a team that might well be suited to play in a way as well i'm not too sure but against a port vale team who we opposed last week their own managerial impact you know managerial change it may be good for the long term it may have to be in league two that they build but who'd have thought darren moore I know. Be in the league two huh? I, I mean on paper you're going well it's a manager that pushed 100 points last year yeah. fair enough and um that the impact hasn't come for them so I, I just don't know. I just think Shrewsbury in a game of still two bad teams, let's be honest, but one that's had an uplift, one that A, has not just a, a manager, like a new face, but someone who the fans have basically wanted or certain sections of the fan base have wanted since he left to go to Ipswich all those years ago because he guided them against all the odds of the league on playoff final, of which they fell short in extra time against Rotherham. So the impact he has had has come in. Uh, has landed um, and it was just a price thing for me and I don't know whether it's probably best as a single or an ACA pick I'm not entirely sure but it's kind of one that just really could go either way this and I'd probably be leaning more towards Shrewsbury is why I wanted to bring them to the table I think it's a great argument <clears throat> I'm definitely uh, with you on thinking that Shrewsbury are a bet it's just, like I say it's just like you said it's just a case of whether we want to put them in with four other teams Um but yeah, Port Vale, we backed against them quite a lot recently and it's paid off because they've been pretty rubbish. They're kind of flailing. They were one of those teams, them and Exeter, wasn't it, that started the season so well that were near the top of the table and they've just crashed and been found out, really. It could just be draw this as well. Like the more, they I started don't know. the season well. Yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure they were either top or second or something after Who? seven or eight games, Port Vale. Did they start the season well, though? If we're talking about the first 90 minutes of the season... <laughs> Did they? Let's go, no. <laughs> um, after, after they got hit for, was it seven? seven. Well, we said that was the weirdest game ever because yeah. it was like the most un 7 I know, it's oh, stupid. I was there. bad 7 nil, and they weren't actually that bad. I like, was there, and I WhatsApp you straight away because we were on Barnes, and I was yeah. like, I'm telling you, Port Vale got a chance here at half-time. <laughs> <laughs> 7 nil. That would be, yeah, that's my big one, Shrewsbury. I know it's... Although Jake's maybe on board. Um, no, uh, yeah, I love it as a pick. And I hate having to do this because you guys never do this to me when I bring a long <laughs> selection. And say, oh, it'd just be better as a single, buddy. But I really do buddy. feel that way. <laughs> buddy, let's pop it in, Let's pop it in the singles. Because I'm just, I don't know a great deal about either of those teams, but I'm just looking at the context of the game. And effectively, I think if Port Vale don't get a result, the gap's going to be too big. And I think that's enough motivation for them and for me to leave them out of a five-fold or four-fold acre. To be honest, just that little bit of context, especially when being at home. Anywhere else we could go? Funny you should say. <laughs> I've, oh. got an, I've got another long shot-ish. Another another acre booster. We'll have to park that, buddy. Sorry about yeah. that. <laughs> probably make a good single. Uh, should we go Mansfield? Uh, <laughs> on, take us away. Chef United. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if, you had, if you added blades to it, we're at 19 to 1 as a treble. So there you go. <laughs> Job just done. A, the issue of needing Sheffield United to win a game of football, that small matter. I'm just joshing. Where are we actually lads. going, Jim Rod? Come I'm on. I'm just joshing Where around with you. <laughs> uh, Coventry at uh, Vicarage Road, Ooh, Skybet Championship. I've got like this. At 13 to 8. I'm not exactly sure if they're still there. Rumour has it they've drifted slightly. 
which is not good news for the betting, but I think it's good news for us because I think they should be going the opposite way. They are on the up. They was unlucky at the Hawthorns last Friday because West Brom scored with both of their first two shots to go 2-0 up. And if there's one place you don't want to be, it's 2-0 down to West Brom at the Hawthorns. So that was desperately unlucky, but that was only their third away defeat since November. The other two was at Portman Road, which, fair enough, Ipswich, pretty good team. And the other one was at Carroll Road, where there was winning, then there was drawing, and then they got a man sent off. And then they went on to lose. So I, I think they are very much on the up. And Watford, I'll let someone else talk about Watford, but they are shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be honest, do we need to expand Just, just that? We need to get the Coventry, um, is it director of football? Or, yes. Uh, now, we need to tread carefully here, because uh, there's been talking the athletic of legal action about right, these well, coming out. I've not named any names. Uh, I might have got, just said job I might got your position <laughs> wrong. Um, I, allegedly. Allegedly. Alleged um, photos. I think, let's say, diplomatically, Co Coventry are confident that they will beat Watford. Mm. <laughs> and let's move on. <laughs> Very diplomatically. Diplomatically there. Yeah. Um, on Watford, actually, on that game last night, we said we're on this Thursday, Wednesday. Would do you think the goal they conceded is the nice summary of Watford's season? It was class, wasn't it? Lovely. Here you go, ball, no, long ball over. Defender deals with it. There you go, keeper have that, and he's headed it into his own net from a <laughs> decent distance as well. It's not like he's done a little. Where there you go, have it, and the keepers miss it. A keepers, decent mildly. finish. Yeah. Uh, it's a hell of a finish. Take it away from him. Yeah, they they're in a sorry state, and I think we we touched on it last week. Their form is absolutely abysmal. Mm. Like they really have tailed off massively, um, and yeah, I mean one so winning. What, yeah, look, say one winning win win eleven. 11 yeah, who was comps. that against? That was at Rotherham. And what was the score? One nil. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> if you're uh, only beating Rotherham one nil, yeah, and it's, and at home as well. It's even drew away at Rotherham. You're not one in <laughs> ten at home either. Not one in ten at home. Oh, sorry, they've won one in ten, and that was against Chesterfield in the FA Cup. So they've not beaten anybody hey, no above them. They're not, but anybody above the fifty in the last in the last nine home matches. The only place um, in the English Football League. Yeah. <laughs> Is it, I, I think I saw Valerian Ishmael come out afterwards, and he was talking about the fact that the players are struggling to deal with the negative atmosphere at Ricky Yeah, Road, which is a real problem. Yeah, um, and and we we joked about uh, was it Sunderland being a relegation battle? I mean yeah. Watford. Playing, yeah, playing like this. It's a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a shame, I suppose, yeah, is the best way to describe seven, it. Seven, yeah. Is that they gave, obviously, they did club statement, Flair and Ishmael going, right, here we go again, Watford's going for another manager. And then it was, right, we've given him a new deal. And it felt earlier in the season that they'd had a decent start, but they felt, okay, we can commit. Finally, there's a manager here we can commit to, get behind, build a project around. And you think, my God, finally. Yep. <laughs> There is some long-term vision. It'll get sat by the end of the season. And then now where it's Watford. kind of like, <sighs> here we are again. To uh, be fair to Watford, though, they've got this man, Valerian Ishmael, who revolutionised might be a bit strong, but the football he brought to English football with Barnsley yeah. was crackers. And he's not playing that way yet. I don't know if it's him or a message from above, but he's playing this sort of half-press, half-possession-based, and it's not to his strength. Mm. He's got this sort of hodgepodge... Hush, hush. He's got <laughs> he's got a weird squad that's not really suited to how he wants to play. So I, d I don't know what's going on, but he's a dead man walking. Yeah. And brilliant point what you said about being at home. It only suits us more because it is toxic there. If Coventry get a goal, yeah. yep. and Ellis Sims has been on oh, real good Patrick's form. In ten days. Yeah. If he, say he or anyone gets a goal early. Yeah. Jesus Christ! Like, and it, you, you don't blame the Watford fans. Any set of football fans are like it. When your team's not doing well, you go behind. You go, oh, here we go, and the groaning. You kind of half try and get behind them, but it's frustration, and then that balls onto the pitch, and it, you know, it just it just feels like you know. Yeah. Well, my my only nagging doubt around Coventry was the the three nil win uh, defeat to Preston, which looks like, it, but it just looks like a complete outlier. And I think the reason I'm not blaming it solely, but that was a Friday night game. They had Mason in the FA Cup with a really good chance of getting to the quarterfinals on Monday, so it was like three days after. So I've like I, I think we can just brush that game aside completely and just say like they were focusing purely on that FA Cup game. And the good thing is it was Leeds Leicester that night as well, so nobody really nobody knew, nobody, nobody even knew that game happened. To be <laughs> fair, they went put a top of the table clash on, put that on telly. Nobody will know this is happening. Yeah, um, I would, think we do it. We take commentary. I think so. Just as we're on Championship chat, and I kind of want to just mention it now because I'm not I'm not sure if we come back to the Championship. It's been a good old week for cheating in this division, isn't cheating. it? Cheating. Good old fashioned oh, the cheating. Old, uh, Hamble good old save, fashioned yeah, cheating, good. man. Like it's it's terrible what happens against your team, but you know you just go, yeah, fair enough. Hull, 
ball comes in, two fingers, whee, have that, punch that in. And then uh, Cedric Kipre last night, QPR yeah. West Brom. Save of the season, if you've not seen this, by the way. It's going to be the first save. I don't know if we do save of the season in this division as an award, but if it is, it's going to be the first non-goalkeeper to win it. Absolutely <laughs> superb. Beats the actual keeper. He goes, I've got this. Yeah. I don't know how he's got away with it. It's a bit of a header. Flap it over. Yeah. And really did you insane. see the, the fan in that game as well? Flicking a rubber band at one of the players. Yeah. yeah that would be really... Yeah, yeah if that? you... You know, obviously we can't endorse throwing anything on a football pitch, but that's a weird thing to go with. Yeah. We just obviously bought his rubber band just in case. Mm, Coventry, though, winning fair and square. Yeah. I think that's fair to say. No cheating required. No needed. Well, if it helps to win the Acker, someone punched the ball in. I couldn't care less. <laughs> Should we take them as a third selection? Yep, let's do it. Pushes the Acker to around 9-2 to two at the moment as a treble. We've got Charlton, we've got Southampton, and an away team. It's Coventry to beat Watford. Nine to 2 treble then so far, as we said there on those three Lovely teams. Um where should we go next? Take us away. Where are we where? going to take Where us? in the world are we going next? We're going to go to Burton. Ooh, good brewing We're town. going to be back in Peterborough. Oh, good um, football team. Very good football team. About 8 to 11. Uh, they, like everybody, like Southampton, who we've, we've also got in this, uh, in this hacker, they had a wobble. Four straight defeats. But they are now back in business. And I'm pretty confident in saying that they are, you know, that, that's out the way now. They're focused purely on scoring a lot of goals, win a lot of football matches and trying to get into the top two. I don't know if they're going to manage that, but I've got confidence that Peterborough are back. The Peterborough of early season are back. Um, they've won four straight now. They've scored 11 goals in that time. And also Burton are the other, um, well, the main reason why I want to get Peterborough on side because they've been really bad recently. Um, concerning defeats, like they lost to Carlisle. Like nobody loses to Carlisle in League One. Burton managed to do that. Uh, lost to Northampton, a team that kind of lost their own form, and they drew with Cheltenham. So three, two teams there that are fighting relegation with them. Um, and at home, Burton have lost the last three without scoring. And I just think this is a Peter Burt. They're going to go there. Burton right for the picking. They're in a massive relegation scrap. Um, they're nervously looking over the shoulder, but I just think Peter Burt just going to... Can they score two? Will Burton reply with two? I just think this they is... they score three? Will Burton reply with three? Mm. That's the question. But I, I think if Peterborough score twice, they win this game comfortably. Yeah, my Cheltenham uh, top half, you mentioned them there, bet's probably not going to come in, I'll be honest, because they're amongst that group that are down there. Um, they went close, though. They did, they did, nearly. Maybe nearly. next time. <laughs> Having ridiculed that mini Peterborough blip last week, going, just a blip, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we yeah. We got you good, man. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, now I'm kind of going, I like this one a lot, actually. Because um, I think last the, the results that have then come on Saturday and Tuesday reaffirm that they kind of should be out of it and not just that the fact to play Northampton which is a significant game for them yeah, a big to game. do so and win Why in is such a confishing game? Uh, Cambridge uh, Northamptonshire oh, rivalry, yeah. I was just going to map it now because I'm sure they said on the radio it's a bit of a rivalry I think yeah it's uh, Peterborough Cambridge is their main one I think now they're away Peterborough Northampton is their next one I think I'll research that I'm just looking at you. It, tell though. me about Burton Peterborough and your thoughts on that game. Go. I was just looking, seeing if there's any key team news to be aware of, but Peterborough not missing any players. They could name an unchanged side. Momentum. Yeah. Uh, is, according to Football Fan Census, sorry to interrupt, Cambridge uh, were cons was considered to be the club's main rivals. And then the next section is Northampton, who are the club's traditional rival. Tradition. There's some football knowledge of the Cambridge and Northamptonshire. I needed that. Area needed. of the EFL. Yeah, cheers, Duff, man. I needed a bit of context of that. To beat your, your yeah. traditional rivals, 5 That's 1 a on big Tuesday. Eight. You are bouncing off the ceiling. Big time. Good luck, Burton. Yeah, I like this. Get him in, I think. The city of Peterborough is historically part of Northamptonshire. Did you know that? Shit, I had no I idea. They're in Cambridgeshire. Uh, it is in Cambridgeshire. Uh, I'm confused. But what I'm not confused about is that I like Peterborough to beat Burton. <sighs> <laughs> he turned into like a Ron Burgundy town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, I don't know. Okay. Um, Stay classy. I like it. It would be a second away team, but I don't have too much of an issue the with away that. teams are good, I mean. Yeah. And the home teams are shit. We've got to go in. So we're pushing above eight to one, nine to one-ish if we had those four in. We'd probably need one more, I yeah. think, just to bump it up a little bit. We definitely do, yeah. Where do we want to go? Can I chuck MK Dons in? can beat Swindon please do it's my one shot MK Dons um, since I and Mike Williamson came in 
have been brilliant, having obviously had the early season bit where Graham Alexander was there, a manager whose football is not particularly pretty, but he has shown he can be an effective um, manager at this level. It didn't work out for them. They obviously wanted to go back to, as they put it, the MK way. Every team <laughs> has a way, and that is their way. They went to Mike Williamson from Gateshead, who was installed this style of football. It's been successful as well. Seven wins and a draw in their last nine at home. Salford had a bit of an upturn, didn't they, under Carl Robinson? Oh, just a bit. I think that's dipped off a little bit now if this game was three weeks ago, maybe. I don't think I'd be as interested in this, but for me, it's it's again, it's just that good, solid home team have now got promotion in their sights, got a really good midweek win against Mansfield, who I've got them down as well, so maybe we'll talk about them shortly. Um, it just seems to me that as an Acker pick, again, that they're a team that kind of jump out, and I know we have backed them during this time under Williamson to some good success, Probably, I can't remember, so I'm just going to say that for more confidence. <laughs> uh, but MK Dons, yeah, at home to Salford would be probably one of my picks of, of League Two, I think. I am astounded by this price. Astounded? Astounded. Yeah, I was really, I wanted to get Salford on side in every way possible when uh, Robinson first come in. But you're right, they've gone to absolute shit these last few games. I was trying to be nice and diplomatic. They've had a bit of a dip off. No. Uh, and you just say it as it is, son. Shite. MK Dons, on the other hand, like you said, they are well in the midst of a, a playoff push. So Automatics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question, yeah. Absolutely. They're, well, they're only five points off Mansfield. Yeah. There's plenty of games to play. So three to four about a home team against a middling to trending downwards away team. Get them in. Could you, could you pick the three teams that are going to go auto automatically from League Two? Could you actually pick it at this stage? I think it's them three that are there, personally. No. Oh, can you trust Stockport? I don't Wrexham? Know. I can't trust a Wrexham side that is so subpar away from home, to be honest with you. I think, not just because I love him, him, them, but I really want crew. Say crew, yeah. Gosh. Hey, crew. Say the line, Jimmy. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, I'm absolutely on board with this. And <clears throat> like you said, Salford, forms dipped. Draw to Doncaster. Not a great result. Doncaster are a great team. Hammered at Mansfield. Yeah. Draw with Colchester again, a team down there, not very good. And then home loss to Gillingham where they didn't really lay a glove on them. I, Yeah, MK Don's absolutely flying under Williamson. They've actually won um, 9 of 12 in total at home, which is pretty sensational really. And what is a, a very tight and evenly matched division generally. Um, yeah, I, I think given the fact that Salford went to Mansfield and got a spanking, I think MK Don's playing a similar... Spanking? <laughs> You enjoyed that one, did you? Who don't enjoy a good spanking? What was it last week? Whooping. Yeah. Whooping, yeah. Whooped. Um, yeah, I, I think MK Don's... We moved on from that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I think MK Don's to get the job done. Um, and like I said, astounded by the price. I expected a lot shorter. I would mention there, do we want to talk about that mansfield Swindon game? But I feel like we've just talked ourselves yeah. into just taking MK Don's. I was going to say where we at because the two... So at the moment, we're so like, good. depending where you look, around 16 to 1-ish. Yeah on those five teams and we're talking their team in good form against really bad struggler promotion chaser at home um, another team that in Coventry that have their own promotion aspirations Peterborough still in the automatic mix MK Don still in the automatic mix as well it's on paper looks good on paper which makes me suspicious <laughs> why is well, this last why is this prize so good well. um, if these teams play ball and win like they should yeah this Acker might win yeah. probably should win the issue though is that if they don't then there's a chance that it doesn't win Tough, man. Well, that's the risk you take that's just the gamble isn't it baby you want to settle on those five then and get out of here yeah I think so yeah let's do it then the five teams for this week's Acker we have got Charlton to beat Carlisle it's Southampton to beat Sunderland Coventry to beat Watford we have Peterborough to beat Burton and finishing it off it is MK Dons to beat Salford and as we said there it's coming in around that 16 to 1 marker and as we say every single week remember to keep it fun never bet more you can afford please gamble responsibly let us know your thoughts in the comments um, in a nice or not nice way just to keep Jimmy interested and more enthusiastic <laughs> next week even if it wins get in touch with us that way all through our Sport and Life football social media channels and head over to sportandlife.com forward slash football on Friday. You'll be able to find the link to back those five teams at an enhanced price. 
And if you haven't already, please follow Rate Us on iTunes, Spotify, or your chosen podcast provider. <sighs> Got all the plugs out of the way there. The You're going to say them in the Cerveza Crystal. Yeah. Oh, oh bastard. I forgot yeah, about that. We'll get some Cerveza Crystal in for next week's episode yeah, if we can get it in. That's it. We will be back at Cheltenham next week as well if it you're is, a fan yeah. of horse racing. So maybe we'll have a little look at that. Do you like Cheltenham, the football team? Do you like Cheltenham, the racing? Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? All right. Yeah. Bose, all that and more when we're back next week.